There was a time not so long ago when sock hops, jukeboxes, and cars with fancy fins were the rage. And they're part of our story today on our series, Where Are They Now? As you realize all week, we've been telling you about places and people you've known, and we're going to tell you where you can write with your own suggestions in just a moment. But first, Jane Siegel is here to, with today's report for us. Jane? Mason, weekends haven't been the same since. Teenagers have their gathering spots now, as they always have, but the atmosphere certainly has changed. The questions behind our puzzle are almost fully answered. We've taken you through the stories of Memphis places and some folks you've known. This evening, Memphis drive-ins, which were more than just places to eat, as Where Are They Now has their story. It was a time for fun, friends, and cars, and drive-ins. The Pig and Whistle, affectionately known as The Pig, opened in the early 40s on Union Avenue, then moved a few blocks away into an English Tudor-style building now occupied by a stained glass company. It was kind of neat. It held everything. And they also had the matches that uh, they would give you all the time. Alex Ward frequented the pig and has held on to fond memories and memorabilia since the drive-in closed in 1967. He says the waiters with names like Cadillac and Lightning were fixtures there. They dressed in white coats, starched white coats, and uh, generally wore a tie. Uh, they never wrote down an order. They memorized the orders, and they never got them wrong, which was phenomenal. Although you could order a hamburger for 40 cents, a milkshake for 40 cents, and even filet mignon for 275, Pig and Whistle was not considered an inexpensive restaurant. But Pig and Whistle wasn't the only place where you could eat in the privacy of your car. At Parkway and Broad, on this now vacant lot, used to sit another very popular drive-in restaurant, the Cotton Bowl. Former employees will tell you the parking lot would be full just about every night. Mayo Williams worked as a cook at the Cotton Bowl from 1936 to 1939. If you were going out, the Cotton Bowl was a place to go. Everybody wanted to drive out in the car and sit in the car and order their food and drink and sit in the car and have fun. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a thing that was, it was just a thing to do then. The restaurant closed in 1968. The only mementos he has are a couple of the dishes he'd scoop ice cream into for the customers. And the first black drive-in, the Gayhawk on Danny Thomas, is still there. Not as a drive-in, but as a restaurant and lounge. Naomi Smith was a car hop for years at the Gayhawk. Well, it was good because it was down the drive-in, but the restaurant, they had the blacks. So most of the blacks... When the drive-in closed in 1968, Ms. Smith continued working and is now a cashier. You won't hear her crying the blues, though, about the drive-in closing. I was getting a little bit older, and uh, my feet couldn't take it no more. These three drive-ins closed around the same time. Ward thinks he knows why. Uh, in October 67, uh, tastes and the way people bought food and went out and, and cruising was beginning to die as uh, the teenagers were doing different things. The Vietnam War was coming on. Uh, the happiness of the American graffiti 50s and early 60s was ending. Also, he says, customers wanted air conditioning with their meals, and the fast food chain started taking over, offering lower prices and faster service. The age of the drive-in had ended. And judging by the success of the modern-day fast food places like McDonald's and Wendy's, it appears old-fashioned drive-ins won't be resurrected.